What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Outside the Arena, the second uh, of the weekend. We're excited to bring it to you. Uh, I'm Griffin Senek, joined by my co-host, Mac Rommel. And yeah, we're bringing you the second episode of the weekend. Obviously, uh, yesterday, uh, when you're, this comes out, uh, we have dropped an episode with uh, Jeff Arnold, the amazing broadcaster from the Baltimore Orioles. So if you haven't, go check that out. Uh, it, I will leave a link in the description to that video. It's also our most recent video after this one. So uh, great video. Me and Mac both really, really enjoyed talking to him. But today, uh, we are just going to do kind of what we normally do. We didn't want to take a break from it because we feel like it'd be weird if we stopped giving predict predictions for a week. So we're going to do another week of NFL predictions. And first, though, we're going to start as we have the past few weeks with Mac's team. So, Mac, do you want to pull that up? I think I'll probably have to give you sharing, and I will. So there you go. And yeah, let's get the show on the road. All right, let me share this. And I guess we're going to start off with running backs like we normally do. Okay, so McCaffrey is out. So we're not going to be able to pick him, obviously. Um, um, Camaro could have a big week, too, I think, this week. For San Francisco and all their injuries. So we could look. Aaron at Jones also could be another name we could look at. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, what is, like, the price on, like, a – um, like a, what's his name? Mike Davis or Giovanni Bernard? What are those guys looking at the price? Mike Davis, 17. Against Tampa Bay, that's a tough matchup, but we could put him in. What's Gio Bernard? Gio Bernard's Pittsburgh, 17 oh. as well. Well, that could be two budget running backs if we want, like, two guys like that, which we might want to do. Um, yeah. So you want to add uh... – Mike Davison. Let's just put them in. Yeah, we'll put them both in for now or something like that. And then we can come back. And then we can definitely splurge at a bunch of other positions. Jason Bernard. All right. Now wide receiver. Devontae Adams versus. I Jack. think we go Devontae Adams. I, I think, think we have to. It's a must. I think we have to. He's a beast. Uh, so Dalvin Cook must not be playing on tomorrow then? Or is he playing? When is Dalvin Cook playing? No, he's not playing tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, could go for. Uh, could tough. go for McCord. We could go for Cooper Cup against the Seahawks for twenty four. Yeah, that would be terrible. I'd like that. Point, yeah. I'd like that a lot, actually. And then, so we have one hundred three for five positions. Defense is cheap. What about A B? That could be a bold one against Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. That's risky, though. They have a lot of options. There. Could go Cooks against Cleveland. That's not terrible. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We could also come back and just get the defense and tight end out of the way, too, if you want to just do yeah. that. Let's go to the tight, tight end. end. Tight end's got to be cheaper this week. Yeah, 20. Yeah, tight end's not, not amazing. So... I mean, maybe Darren Waller. I feel like with Waller, Waller's so consistent. I feel like we got it. If we want a beast here, we got to go Waller. Waller. Get a defense out of the way. Let's see those cheap. Probably going to want to pick a $10. Oof. $10 ain't looking too good this week, huh? 11s. I mean, I like. I kind of like the, the Texans in a way against Cleveland. With Nick Chubb back? I mean, the Nick Chubb is back, though, yes. Um. Detroit against Washington, maybe. That's that might not be terrible. Alex Smith throwing three picks last week. I mean, I think I mean, we... that's kind of the best option. I think I don't know what you think, but to me, that's the best. Um, you want to go to the quarterback? Or yeah, let's get quarterback. Let's get quarterback out of the way. Um, so we're not going to want to spend thirty nine on a quarterback. Um, I think we should get the best player available, Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. These are all like backups. Tua for 24 could be a play. Oh, yeah, versus the Chargers. Let's do that. Actually, let's put them in. It's pretty Five. cheap. And now we have 20. not too much for each position. Devontae Parker is taking up most of our money right now. That's okay. I'm Adams. We have to have him. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think if we could get like a if we can get like a seventeen dollar guy. Oh, DJ Chark against Green Bay. Actually, I think we should put him in All because right. I'm. What I saw today was that Jair is going to be out and Laviska Chenault's going to be out. So Chark could have a huge game. 
Yep. All right. I think that's a budget budget pick, and then we have twenty eight dollars left. So who could we get? Miles. Ooh, Sanders. Miles Sanders. Lions. Kareem Hunt versus yeah. he, he's going to be back up this week. James. I would either go Diggs. James Conner threw me off last week, so I don't feel like I would get maybe Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders might not be a bad pick here. Yeah, versus the Giants. I think I agree. I think we should put him in. All right. I think that's a good lineup. Perfect lineup. A lot of what do you think? And you want to change anything? A lot of potential is what I like. I mean, you got the uh, Devontae Adams pick, obviously. You got Darren Waller. So you got some studs. You got some studs mm-hmm. there. I think it's a good balance. I agree. And I think, you know, we got our budget guys. We got Mike Davis, Bernard. Those guys could really go off. So it's not like those guys are shitters. You know? And Tua, um, especially after last Tua week. Tua could be good. What did Tua do last week? 248 yards, two touchdowns, 35 rushing yards. Pretty solid. I think that's good. Probably, I think that's a good pick. I, I like the Cooper Cup pick against them. DJ Shark maybe has a huge game. I mean, he's a little risky, but you never know. Miles Sanders and Waller are both beasts. So. I like this team. I think it's a really good team. Let me save it. I ain't giving them that. Let me stop sharing. All right. Well, that was kind of a, a quicker, I feel like, run through of that. Um but that's a good team. I think, you know, we worked efficiently there. We're getting better at figuring out who we want to take there. So I think that's pretty solid team. So I guess with that, we can jump into uh, talking about a little bit of last week of what happened in the NFL. Um, I'll start with you, Mac. Are there any games that come to mind that you want to want to start with here? I mean, that happened last week. I think this is pretty obvious for me. That's Steelers Cowboys game. I mean, I was on the tip of my seat the entire the tip of my seat the entire game. I lost my voice. I mean, a lot of yelling. That was a great game. Uh, but Cowboys came up short. The Steelers did not did not look uh, consistent throughout the game entirely. They haven't looked like themselves running the ball, especially. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger uh, averaged the most yards per carry, and he had one yard. He had one carry for eight yards. The next closest was Deontay Johnson with four. And the running backs, James Conner, 2.4. I mean, that's uncharacteristic. The Cowboys, you're letting Garrett Gilbert, I mean, the fourth starting quarterback for the Cowboys, put up 2.3 yards, a touchdown, an interception. And then Tony Pollard on nine carries, 6.3 average. The Cowboys looked good. And I mean, I'm kind of surprised that they're going to be going back to Andy Dalton after that performance. But Steelers looked out of it, really, the entire game. Their defense wasn't entirely there. Uh, so that's my game I'd say I have to uh, choose out of these games this week. Yeah, I mean, you look at the stats for the Cowboys. I mean, Garrett Gilbert had a really good game. Um, there's no doubt about that. He fired up that team for sure. Zeke has just got to do better. I mean, 18 for 51. He's not he, – Zeke yeah. has been a disaster this year, honestly. He hasn't had a, a game with 100 rushing yards all year. That's a major problem there. So I agree with that. Uh, a game that I found really interesting – uh, is going to be a game – well, we can talk Panthers, Chiefs. But the game I want to focus on here is the Raiders-Chargers. The Raiders are a team – and the Chargers, once again, lose within one score. It's kind of incredible at this point that they've lost every game and played every game within one score. But the Raiders, you know, a team that we have both said we like, mm-hmm. a team that I think will be in the playoffs, and the Chargers team with very young talent. I mean, you look at Justin Herbert. He's been incredible this year. No doubt about that. Uh, he's a star. Mike he, he, yeah. Keenan Allen has been uh, amazing this year for them. Uh, but the Raiders, you know, they just use all these guys. You look at the list here, uh, Henry Ruggs didn't have a catch, but, you know, there's a bunch of different guys they use. They don't really have a superstar wide out. They have Hunter Renfro, he's been good. Nelson Aguilar, he gets good good catches. Darren Waller's Mr. Consistent for them. Jalen Richard gets in there. Josh Jacobs, obviously, a fullback they use a little bit. Like, they have all these little options and pieces that, mm-hmm. that I really like. Their defense continues to play pretty well. They've got a good, uh, good young uh, core there so I really liked what I saw from Vegas winning another close game and I, I still like what I see from Herbert uh, I think they're doing well I, I hate that the Chargers are two and six but uh, if you can get a top pick this year maybe you go for like a I mean who could this team really need maybe even like a Patrick Sertain or something like that a cornerback I feel like uh, that cornerback core is a little it's getting up there in age it's getting up there yeah um, so yeah a good game from Vegas I think they'll continue it uh, to continue to play well, but we'll see what happens there. Yeah, if I agree with you, Darren, I mean, especially when you're looking at these rushing stats for, for the Raiders, 
they're getting everyone involved. They're getting receivers involved. Henry Ruggs. Yeah. They're they're really spreading this ball around. If one guy isn't doing great, they put another guy in, and he does do great. And that's kind of the thing with the Raiders. Uh, I feel like they've kind of been inconsistent with having everyone um, play well in a game in the run game. And instead of sticking to Josh Jacobs when he may not be doing the best, but switching things around, like they got Devontae Booker involved a lot this game, 8.5 yards per carry and a touchdown. So I feel that is kind of the key for them turning things around now. You saw last week how they started switching things up when Josh Jacobs wasn't playing as well uh, as he has in previous games. So that was the key takeaway for me in this game. And the Chargers, they have a lot of potential there. As you said, <laughs> they may even be the best 2-16 we've ever seen. It's crazy. <laughs> under. I mean, we say it every week at this point. It's crazy. Makes it's crazy. They have, they have so much talent on the team. It's We'll see what happens, man. But they're dealing with some injuries, obviously. Derwin James Eckler's been out. So next year, I mean, it's always next year with the Chargers. But God, <laughs> it, Justin Herbert, one thing for sure, he is a star that is here to stay. He might arguably be the best quarterback in that draft class, I think. We'll see that. This may be that next year, and it may actually happen this time. Hopefully. Maybe. Without we'll Phillip Rivers, it's bound to happen. I think it is. Saints Bucks. This is a game that I want to talk about. I know yep. you do as well. Um, wow. I mean, 38 to three. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady with a pathetic performance. I didn't actually know this. They ran the ball four times and five times, and one was a kneel. I actually didn't know that. It's crazy. That, that's pretty incredible and crazy. Yeah. I mean, where do we even start with this game? First of all, the Saints with Michael Thomas back looked great on offense. They didn't even use him too much. I mean, he was the leading receiver. Kamara really didn't do too much out of the passing game. Small small day from him. Taysom Hill. They get this guy involved, and they finally really found him in this game. They used him a lot. What do you like from the Saints here, and what do you do not like from the Buccaneers here? The Saints, I mean, they were spreading that ball around. Look at the list of names. Look at that list of names. I wonder how many are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. 11, twelve. Twelve receivers just put the ball around. And I believe it was either a, com- a combination of the first and second drive, or was that first drive one where they got six or seven guys involved on a, on a single drive. That was insane. And that's kind of the key, I feel, for the Saints. Every time you hear a team spread the ball around and it's working – they never end up losing. And the Saints did that. They kept to it. And they were able to easily win this game. The Buccaneers, I mean, that was terrible. Tom Brady, it's so it's so hard. I don't even know what to say about him. Three interceptions, no touchdowns. But especially, what is your game plan coming into this game if you're only going to run the ball four times, excluding the kneel down? I mean, that's not a game plan. You're never Give him the kneel down. Give him it. <laughs> five. They rushed that five. Gabbard <laughs> was getting in there. Yep. But I mean, there's you can't have a game plan and expect to win if you're only rushing the ball four times. I mean, if you rush the ball four times, then you're going to be passing the ball the rest. So the Saints, they obviously were able to pick up and realize that they only were passing the ball. You were able to stop that, and they still didn't go to the game. It made no sense. I think this is more on the coaching staff of the Buccaneers because they weren't able to get these guys involved. They didn't even show an effort to get these guys involved, and that's on the coaching staff for this game. I think the Buccaneers could have lost and still would have lost. Tom Brady looked a little out of it, but all these stats, Tom Brady and the rushing things, would be much, much better if they just game planned for this game much better and got the running game more involved. Yeah, I think maybe, I don't know if it was the, you know, first game back for Antonio Brown that they really wanted to come out and they thought that this passing attack was going to be crazy, but it's not going to be crazy if your quarterback plays like, like terrible. I mean, I, at the end of the day, Brady played terrible. I think, you know, he's had a few of these this year already, um, which I think is just apparently happening to him now. And it seems like it might even just happen in the system. I mean, we saw Jameis Winston have games like this last year where he just couldn't do anything. So I don't know if it's that or if it's just Brady just struggled but I really liked what I saw from the Saints I feel like the Saints are such an underrated team this year weirdly enough they've had these games uh and people always act like they're bad people are saying Drew Brees is fading he's not the same and well he's not the same I mean 26 for 32 222 and four touchdowns what's not to like there that's really as good as it gets and the one thing that really really I liked seeing was Taysom Hill they hadn't used him too much they used him a lot but this is a guy that they signed in the offseason they re-signed him they brought him into a good deal and he's really establishing himself as a player that teams are going to want to model guys after. They're going to find a Taysom Hill. Two for two, 48 yards passing. A guy who can throw the ball. 
seven, he was the leading rusher on the team, seven rushes, 54 yards. I mean, this guy plays tough football. You see him, I was, you know, overhearing the announcers while I was watching saying, I mean, this guy just doesn't care. You look at him and this guy will charge after he, you. He does not care about getting hit. He's a massive guy and he is tough. That's huge. And he's even in the receiving game, a catch for 21 yards. I mean, what's not to like there? They get this guy involved. They get Kamara. And now you have Michael Thomas back with all these different options. Adam Trotman, they're using him a lot. The, uh, the tight end, he has been great recently. And it's just about finding guys like that that can get involved. And uh, the defense has the names. I mean, it's kind of weird that they hadn't been playing as well. You got Malcolm Jenkins. They brought in people forget about him. He had an interception. It's Mario Davis. He's been, I believe, an all-pro before. Marshawn yep. Lattimore, obviously. Uh, Mike, Trey Hendrickson, he's underrated. A, I mean, he's Mike Evans' father, honestly, right now. Oh, it's it's <laughs> incredible. And Mike Evans did have, you know, uh, I believe Marshawn tweeted or something after the game saying, like, I'll see you next year or something, something along those ga- lines. But Evans, four, was the leading receiver here. But still, I mean, just a terrible game from the Bucs. Uh, we'll see what happens this week. But, um, yeah, that's all I got from them. Yep, Drew Brees, I mean, also, four touchdowns. He's really trying to make an effort to to take away that throne of most passing touchdowns in NFL history, yeah. Tom Brady. And he, I know, they're going back. They go back and forth each week. It's pretty funny. Yeah, but Drew Brees, after that one, I mean, he, he has a little bit of a lead right now that Tom Brady's going to have to catch up on. We'll see what happens there. But should be good. Saints, though, won both divisional games against the Bucks this year, so for what home field is worth or division uh, is worth in the end, that could really, really come down to that. So um, I, I mean, do you want to discuss anything else? I'm good with, good with that really. Uh, if you want to bring something else up, let's go there. So I mean, one more game before we go to this week. I mean, we have to talk about it. You briefly mentioned a second ago or a little bit ago, and that was the Panthers and the Chiefs. This yeah. is a great game. And great game. the person who's been high on the Panthers, this is what I wanted to see. This is how the Panthers have to play. I mean, obviously, they're going to lose this game versus the Chiefs, but them hanging in there, having leads at points, Teddy Bridgewater playing great, 310 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, in his week back, uh, he really had an impact in the run game. He only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. He did get a touchdown, but in the receiving game, 10 catches, 82 yards, and a touchdown there. I mean, he's a dual threat running back, and that's why the Panthers are going to have so much success in the future. And as I said uh, in previous weeks um, before this week, Curtis Samuel, he is a guy I've been looking at who has to get much more involved in this offense. Nine receptions, 105 yards. And then in the run game, three rushes, 13 yards. So he's getting involved in both sides of the offense, rushing and receiving. Great by the Panthers. They have so much to look forward to, especially with Christian McCaffrey back. But the Chiefs, they played great. This is really just the Panthers playing great with them, keeping up with them, and that's all this game was. Yeah, I I, I agree with you there. Teddy Bridgewater's been great for the, the Panthers this year. I've really liked what I've seen with him, and he's found his guys that he likes. He, you know, DJ Moore was the guy before he got there this year. Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel have been the guys. DJ Moore hasn't been used as much, which I think, you know, happens. And, and DJ Moore is a great talent, but I don't believe he's all world. I don't believe he should be, you know, he's not, you're not talking about this guy as one of the best receivers. So to me, then it balances it out and you got to just go with preference and guys who are getting open. Robbie Anderson is very underrated on the jets. He's been amazing this year. Curtis Samuel, a guy who you can do so much with. You can line him up in the backfield. You can line him up as a receiver. You can line him at the slot. You can, you can put him anywhere you want, which is really useful. They've done that this year. Great use of McCaffrey. It sucks that he's, back injured again i mean you got to start to wonder is he injury prone uh what's going on there uh i honestly i would kind of just rest him i mean i know that's not uh their mentality but or his but you're three and six it's, it's not looking too bright so give him whatever he needs and you know when he says he's ready give him that week off as well just make sure he's 100 percent. i would say uh that's what i would do and on the flip side of the ball the chiefs really are just I mean, Patrick Mahomes has just proven that he's the best quarterback in the, in the National Football League week in and week out. You look at the stats, 30 for 45, 372, four touchdowns. The run game really, it, I mean, it doesn't, they have a good good backs, but Lev Bell, I think, is just not that good anymore, honestly. I think we've seen that. He hasn't done much with the Chiefs. Uh, you know, he's not a fantasy guy. People are saying he'd be an RB2 or something. No, he, he's a waiver wire pickup. Clyde, you know, has toned it down a little bit. These are the two get keys right here. Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill for this offense. And, you know, I don't want to talk for too long, so I'm going to I'm gonna just wrap it up here. But 
Kelsey, con- most consistent player in the NFL, fantasy wise and in real life, superstar. Tyree Kill, he was due to have a game like this. I mean, talk about having a breakout game, having a monster game. I mean, nine catches, 113 yards, two touchdowns. Last thing I want to touch on Daniel Sorensen. This guy might be one of the most underrated players in the National Football League. This guy, he kind of does everything. They call him Dirty Dan, apparently. Uh, that's a fun one. He's 30 years old, um, plays safety, plays around the field. But this guy's done a lot. He's a very aggressive player. And you see him leaning in tackles. And you always see him kind of in the key place. That's kind of keep out a name that I would keep a lookout for. He's kind of one of those random guys that, you know, just kind of makes the plays when it happens. So I like Daniel Sorensen and I like the Chiefs. And, you know, I think right now they might be my Super Bowl favorite. They're playing too well. So. We'll take there. We'll see. So I guess that'll take us to this week, obviously. We saw Thursday night. Uh, I'll ask you before we get into our predictions, what is your main takeaway from this week's Thursday night football? I mean, it's it's really got to be with the Titans uh, for me on this one. I feel like the Titans kind of lost this game uh, in a poor way. I mean, in previous weeks, and when we saw the Tennessee Titans winning games, it's Ryan Tannehill complimenting Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry with 19 carries, you can't really compliment a running back with 19 carries. That's more of a number to compliment your quarterback. So you see 19 carries, you would expect the passing numbers to be high. Only 27 attempts, 15 completions, 147 yards. So no one's complimenting the other person. And that's the real problem the Tennessee Titans have been having. They're not complimenting the passing game with the running game or the other way around. That's the main problem that they're having. But for the Colts, Phillip Rivers, he kind of started off the season slow, and he's having – he's coming back, really. Six and three now, 308 yards this week, one touchdown. But then the run game, I mean, Naeem Hines uh, did have a good game. Only 12 carries, 70 70 yards, excuse me, a 5.8 average and a touchdown. But he's great. I wish he would have got him a little bit more involved. But all around, a great, great win by the Colts. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I don't know if this is true, but it's saying Jacoby Brissett had a rushing touchdown. Is that true? Do you know if that's true? I'm not sure if that's true. Oh, yeah, he did because they did the QB sneak. Oh, they did. Okay. On like a fake field goal or some shit? Like what? No, it was like on fourth and one or something. Or some... Oh, they brought him in. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that happened. Uh, uh-huh. Jonathan Taylor is kind of one of my main takeaways. This guy yeah. started the year off. Uh, and also in a fantasy way, started the year off, he was playing pretty well. And then he's just kind of gone downhill from him. I mean, he's seen seven carries, 12 yards. He's had fumbling issues this year. I just don't think, you know, in fantasy, he's not not a start guy anymore. You're not starting this guy. Naheem Hines, to me, has taken over. He's just put up the most production. Him and Jordan Wilkins just look the best at, in this backfield right now. And I, I think that's how they're going to play. They're going to play by their committee. Michael Pittman had a huge game. Oh, my yeah. God, seven catches, 101 yards. Star rookie there, T.Y. Hillman, starting to get more involved. And that's the key. Get these guys involved. You know, I know they're not going to have the superstar wide out and have one guy just get fed all the weeks. I'm speaking bad English right now. I apologize. Uh, But, yeah, I I still can't tell if the Colts are good or if I like the Colts or what's going on here. But it seems like the Colts always are in the playoffs every year, but they'll lose in, like, the divisional round. So that's probably what I expect here. Bad showing from the Titans, like you said. I don't really have too much more to touch on. You got to get AJ Brown more involved. One yeah. catch from him is not acceptable. So that's all I got from there. But yeah, you look at these stats and it's really just kind of demoralizing when you look at these, these passing yards. So yeah, that's all I got from there. So that'll take us, I guess, to our week predictions for week 10. I can't believe it's already week 10. It's kind of crazy. It's crazy. Kind of crazy. I mean, geez, playoffs are going to be coming soon. Sheesh. Um, I know. Wow. Like, so weeks. No. It's, it's it just goes by in a flash i swear it's wild yeah That's texas a browns football, win. I mean, a little what too fast saying? that goes by i know really, That's really. The i mean goes by too yeah. fast but i mean that's what makes it exciting i think it goes fast because you know especially for us because school year you get the week done and then it's then you get football and it's like oh school week again and then fo- i think it's just yeah. it goes so quick sometimes but yeah Browns Texans will start with Nick Chubb making his return off IR Mac. Who do you got in this one? Easy for me. I mean, it's I don't even know if I really have to say much about it, but the Browns are gonna get a win here, especially got Nick Chubb back. This should be an easy one for the Browns. I don't think it's gonna be as easy as you're making it seem necessarily. Um, I agree with you that it will be a Browns win. 
I, the Texans have showed signs of, of really nice, strong offensive production like last week. I know it was against the Jags. That defense is going to be the issue. Both these defenses are the issues of these teams, though. So we'll see. How, I think it depends how Baker Mayfield plays. You know, he's been week to week with the, the consistency. So if he comes out with a strong performance, I think you'll see a Browns win. But um, I believe they're coming off a bye, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, they should be good to go. I, I, they should have a nice win, especially with Nick Chubb back. They're going to pound the run. Him and Kareem Hunt expect to see a lot of the two of them out there. But I'll give it to the Browns, but it could be close. I don't really know. I don't know. It, I feel like the how the closeness of it will depend on the Browns passing attack. If it's really good, then it'll be a blowout. If it's not so good, close Browns win is my prediction. Washington and the Lions. Now, football team, Alex Smith going to be the starter versus Matthew Stafford going to Ford Field. Is it is it Ford Field? No, it's the – is it? I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look it up because I said <laughs> Ford Field might be the Tigers. Ford Field is yeah, that's Detroit the- Lions. Yes, we got it. Ford Field, uh, Washington football team and the Lions. Who do you got here, Mac? Um, give me the Lions football team. They're on another quarterback, Alex Smith, now after <laughs> that gruesome, gruesome Kyle Allen injury. Uh, I mean, the football team, they could keep it and keep up with the Lions if they're able to get that Terry McLaurin connection going with Alex Smith. But last week, Alex Smith with three turnovers. And I'm not sure this is a defense – that will of the Detroit Lions that will be able to easily stop them, especially with uh, Jeff Okuda. And uh, they got some good players over there. And then the football team, they're going to really have to get Antonio Gibson going if they want to win here. But the Lions, a little bit of an off week last week for Matt Stafford with one touchdown, two interceptions. But they're going to be looking to improve that here. And they should be able to get a win. I'm going to go Lions as well here. Uh, I like what you said. Uh, I believe is Kenny Galladay going to be out. I'm not so sure. I know you're on the, I can see you're on the move right now, but uh, Kenny Galladay, let me check his status while Mac is, uh, is on the move. Uh, I believe he's playing. Uh, oh, is he out? Does that say out? Yep. Kenny Galladay is out. So I'm mistaken. Uh, questionable. Yeah. He, yeah. So they will be missing some of their weapons. That said, Washington football team is missing. Uh, their quarterback, Alex Smith, ha- had some turnover issues. Great to see him back out there, no doubt uh, about that. But I'll give this to the Lions. One thing I will look out for, I know you mentioned Antonio Gibson. J.D. McKissick, a guy who apparently I read somewhere that he had like 36% of the target share with Alex Smith. That is wild. That's crazy. So uh, I'm starting him in one of my leagues, so that's also why I bring him up, or two of my leagues this <laughs> week. So oh, let's go, J.D. Have a big day. But, uh, yeah, I think the Lions will win this one. Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola. Uh, and those guys will will have big games, I think. So we'll see what happens there. Bucks Panthers, it's gonna be a, a good game. I'll start here. Uh, the Bucks place multiple receivers on reserve COVID list. Well, let's check that out real quick. Um, who are these receivers? Okay, they're bums. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be a this is gonna be a Bucks win. Uh, maybe it's the guy that uh, what was the guy's name that the kid was trying to get us on with? Do you remember? I don't remember now. I don't remember. Well, I think that guy got cut, so um, that's awkward. But Tampa Bay Bucks, uh, this podcast is all over the place. Uh, Tampa Bay Bucks, yeah, should get this win, bounce back win. No CMC, uh, so I think the Panthers are gonna not have a great week, but we'll see. I think Antonio Brown, Brady, uh, Godwin, Evans. I'm excited to see that. Kind of finally, I feel like we'll get a real chance to see that offense explode this week. Uh, last week was obviously a disaster from the start, so give me the Bucks here. It should be. Uh, two touchdown, two touchdown uh, separation. I, I I literally can't like I'm I'm struggling to put sentences together right now. <laughs> it's not going too well for me. So well, we'll see. Oh, this is really tough. I mean, I'm just gonna pick a team off the top of my head. I really want to see the Panthers, but I mean, without CMC, that's kind of what's leading me to the Bucks. So you know, I I'll, I'll take the Bucks, and that's only because of CMC being out. If CMC was in, give me the Panthers. But because uh, you saw what CMC obviously did last week in the passing game. Uh, almost 10 receptions, uh, 80 yards, and he was explosive with two touchdowns. He was a key part of that offense and really helped and aided in the success of Teddy Bridgewater last week. The Buccaneers, a really off week. I mean, there's no way they're only going to have four carries this week, and there's no way Tom Brady's going to get three interceptions. They'll probably have that on the first four plays this week. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Have the run. But, and then get Gabbard in there for the meal. Yeah, 
I think this is a week where those receivers are going to explode a little bit more. You need Antonio Brown a little more involved because he did have a solid game last week, only three catches, but still uh, he put up some decent numbers, 31 yards. Um, but it's really going to be Mike Evans this week. Could you get him involved in the red zone, which is where a lot of his success has been? Uh, I saw a stat a few weeks ago, and this was at that time. It was in the red zone when he was targeted six for six in six touchdowns. So he was explosive in the red zone, so you're going to have to continue to get him involved there. The Panthers, if they want to win this game, I mean, maybe try and see to get Mike Davis a little bit more involved in that passing game. Curtis Samuel, as I said, I love him. I love what he's been doing. Get him really involved, and you could have a shot at winning this game. But right now, it's going to be a Buccaneers win. Yep. I I I, for, I literally thought I had to give my prediction, but I realized I already gave it, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles. Oh boy, I don't know. This is uh this is interesting. Maybe it's because we got filmed on yesterday, but this one is uh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm having a rough time here. Mac, let's I'll, t- I'll have you take over with this one. Eagles Giants. What are you thinking? Shoot, I mean, this is kind of tough for me. Eagles and Giants. I think, uh, I mean, this is the, a battle of turnovers, really. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be who who could turn over the ball le- least. I mean, less. I don't even know what they need. Either. Least. Okay, so We're having good. trouble. <laughs> but, I mean, the Eagles, their last game was versus the Cowboys when they had four turnovers. The Giants, Daniel Jones still continues to have – and continues having turnovers. This is tough. I mean, the Giants are going to have Golden Tate back. But the Eagles, they're having Miles Sanders back. And I think that could be a reason the Eagles are going to win this one. I'm going to choose the Eagles. It's not going to be hard. It's not going to be an easy win for them, excuse me. But the Giants are going to keep up with the Eagles. This could easily be a Giants win. But it's tough for me. But the Eagles, just because of Miles Sanders, I'm going to give them one. Completely agree. And, you know, I think your reasoning is spot on. Last time these teams played, Miles Sanders was not healthy. This time he is. And to me, that's going to be the game changer here. Obviously, Boston Scott, you know, I don't really think he's – I mean, he has played well against the Giants. So, maybe the Giants yeah. will do better with Miles Sanders. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, but I think Miles Sanders will be the difference maker, like you said. Uh, look like look for guys like Travis Fulgham that continue to produce for the Eagles. He's been fantastic this year. But for me, the Giants, uh, I'm just not sold on them as a team right now. They just have, have had their too many down weeks for them. Um, they played some close games, no doubt. But – uh, to me, the Eagles will come out on top four, four, and one, too. Uh, could be running away with this division, potentially, we yeah. could say. So, we'll see what happens there. But uh, we both got the Eagles. And, wow, only one more one o'clock game. So, there's six four o'clock games. Oh, that's – And there's five one o'clock what games. What is that, like a new, uh, a new record? I don't know. I've never I seen that. I mean, it before. seems like it. I've never seen that. Wow. Before. That's weird. More four o'clock games than one o'clock games. That's kind of crazy. That's I've never well, seen it before. That would, that would be fun. But Jags Packers to me, I don't even have to talk about this. Should be a Packers blowout. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take the Jags. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Packers easy. Don't even have to talk about. It. He got the best receiver. Yeah, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is healthy. He was back last week. Devonte Adams will probably drop fifteen thousand yards this week. So that's good for our team. Yeah. Uh, in our in our league pick, maybe we should take an Aaron Jones too. Maybe. I like our team that we put together. We'll see what happens there. Bills Cardinals. It's actually a very good game. I think a lot of these four o'clock games are pretty darn good. Uh, I'm seeing a few that I think we'll pick pretty similarly, but ah, this one's tough. I don't know who to take here. I'm going to start with you since I don't know. Do you know who you got? Um, you know, it's going to be based off last week. Bills put up 44. Cardinals struggled versus the Dolphins. This is going to be a Bills win. Stefan Diggs is going to have a big day. Uh, their defense, I think the Bills are actually may get some turnovers this week versus Kyler Murray. Um, Kyler Murray is going to have to really win with his legs this week, I feel, be versatile, passing the ball, running the ball. But the Bills are going to win this game. I'm going to go Cardinals here. Um, I know, like, the Bills are probably the favorite, but I don't know. I just feel like the Cardinals are going to get this win. I feel like Kyler Murray, after last week, is going to be, like, more motivated. Kenyon Drake might play. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. I think, I think probably, that's a negative, honestly. Probably will be a negative. I <laughs> it's a negative yeah. for my fantasy team. Um, so if he doesn't play, it looks good for the Cardinals. But Chase Edmonds really didn't do too much last week. So maybe it'll be nice to have that split back in there. But I don't know. I just feel like they're going to get it going. D-hop, I feel like we'll have a bounce back week. He really wasn't targeted, which I think uh, contributed to their lack of success. Uh, he got locked down by those tough corners. Obviously, he'll be guarded likely by Trey White, so that won't help. But we saw DK Metcalf 
have a fantastic week last week, even against Trey White. So anything's possible when you're DeAndre Hopkins against anyone. So to me, I'm going to go Cardinals here. Uh, I think their defense will play relatively solid. So, yeah, I'll go Cardinals. I'll, I'll switch it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I can't even come bash you there because I think that's going to be a close game, honestly. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I can take it in either way. Chargers fins here. Um, the Dolphins are five and three. I mean, that's wild. That's nuts. That's nuts. I kind of like. I'm loving the Dolphins. I love the Chargers, and I want to pick the Chargers. But I'm going to pick Miami here. This team is. We saw it last year. They're a really motivated team. They seem to really rally under Brian Flores, who I think is establishing himself as one of the top coaches in the league. I think he's already top ten. From what we've seen, year, honestly, he really could be. I, I thought he could have been last year as well. Everyone thought the Dolphins would be 0 16. Everyone wanted out. And then he fired up those guys, and they ended up winning a lot of games towards the end of the year. And they screwed the Patriots out of that bye, if you don't remember, in week 17, I believe, or something like that. I believe I was in Aruba at the time. So I remember that one wisely. Um, I can't speak right now. <laughs> but give me the Dolphins. Um, I don't know what their running game will look like, but. Uh, the passing game really worked last week, and I think the Chargers are that team. It'll be within one score, I assume. As always. Uh, but yeah, as, a, as <laughs> always. But even the, I think it's been eight, eight games this year, all one score. I mean, Every game. Oh, no, they win oh, wow. more than one score. Okay. But they're lo- every other game is within one score. Yep. So, I actually, I, okay, so their, one of their wins was a 10 point. Wow. But their losses are. Give me the Dolphins. Give me the Dolphins at home. Devontae Parker could have a nice game. Preston Williams is out now, I believe, but we'll see what happens there. Dolphins getting a win. With who was the starter, I mean, this team, like, they may not have the talent, but, I mean, they're a fired-up team. And, really, the past few seasons, you're seeing fired-up teams, even with little talent, could go places. I mean, you saw what the Cowboys did last week. I mean, could they maybe use that and turn it around into something like the Dolphins did last year? It's unlikely, but, I mean, you see what – what, um, uh, what just being a, a hyped up team is really you don't need talent you just work together and have fun that's all it is and that's what the Dolphins are doing and I, I mean this is a team that could go in the playoffs and even maybe get a win or two in the playoffs so they give me the Dolphins but it's going to be one score it has to be there's there's no other way this game could go down <laughs> I think you know one interesting point I want to bring up their defense has been playing really really good you look at their defensive touchdowns they've had I don't know if they show, but I believe they had they had one last week and they had two the week before. So their defense is playing really, really well. This guy, Van special Ginkle. Teams. Special guy, teams. Yeah, special teams has been very good. Van Ginkle, this guy came out of nowhere, uh, yeah. fifth rounder, and he's played great for them. Uh, just guys like that. They also have Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. People forget they also have star power on this defense. Yeah. The defense is a very talented defense, and I think that's where this team is really good. Offense, not as talented, but they're fired up, so yeah. they're going places. Hey, and I'm um, going to give the Dolphins, and so are you, going to give the Dolphins the win. Yep. Broncos, Raiders. Uh, I love Vegas Raiders, man. We have both love the Vegas Raiders, and I assume you're going to pick them here. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go Raiders here. Uh, I just like the way they play. I just like the style they roll with. Aggressive. A lot of guys get involved. Same with defense, too. Uh, and to me, the Broncos are a good team. They string together a win here and there, but I believe they just lost to the Falcons, so that's never good, so. Give me the Raiders here at home as well. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's all I got. Why not talk about the battle between the two Alabama receivers? I mean, oh. like I said, Jerry, Judy, they're going to be going at this week. I mean, they're going to be fine for who has the better game. It's going to be a good game. But Raiders. Well, Henry Ruggs might not get a – might not catch a pass. So, that could be an issue. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We have to look to the bright side. I feel there's going to be like a little secret competition they're having. You know, they're probably texting each other right now. I agree. Now. There could, could be a wager. Be a wager. <laughs> I, think I agree. It's going down, but the Raiders can get a win. Josh Jacobs is great. He's something they did last week, even when another he is- Alabama boy, Josh yeah. Jacobs. So I mean, you're seeing even when when Josh Jacobs isn't great, some other guys are great, and that's the key to the Raiders' success now. If they're going to get a few more wins this season, hopefully, can even make a push for the playoffs. We're going to have to see how that goes. But the Raiders are a decent team right now, and they should be beating the Broncos, who are coming off that loss, as you said. Looking at it, their schedule, they got Broncos, Chiefs, yeah, tough Chiefs. game, but they beat the Chiefs, Falcons, Jets, Colts, you know, eh, Chargers, they beat the Chargers, Dolphins could be a tough Broncos. I feel like they could string together at least four yeah. wins, which would take them to nine in a 17 playoff. They should be good. So mm-hmm. I think the Raiders might be in the playoffs this year, Mac. I'm not going to lie. I think so. 
Seahawks Rams. This could be a good game. Seahawks have kind of fallen flat on their face a little bit. Uh, I mean, just some rough weeks recently. Really close games. You know, they've played close football this year. I mean, look, at, they've talked about one score games as well. Seahawks have been, you know, within 10 points almost every game of the year. So yeah. they've been close as well. I'm going to go Seattle just because that offense is so explosive. And I feel like the Rams offense won't be able to keep up with it. And the Seahawks have proved they can score on any defense. Um, but I, I don't know. The Rams, it really depends. The Rams could string together a big game. I don't know what we're going to see here, but I'm going to go Seahawks because I don't want to pick against them here. But I think it could be really close. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think Seahawks are going to get that one. But, I mean, last week you saw Russ didn't look himself. They still dropped 34, and he had his turnovers, yeah. which is absolutely insane. That tells you, like, everything about that offense. They dropped 34 with two interceptions by Russ. That's crazy. And those two interceptions really could have been a turning point in that game because with their offense, they easily could have got that um, – ran down the field, got a touchdown, a field goal, maybe tie that game, or even two touchdowns to win that game. But that's uncharacteristic of Russ – and that's – there's no way really that that's going to ever happen again again in two straight weeks. So this is a game for the Seahawks to lose. But it could be close to their division rivals. It is in L.A., which is obviously an advantage to the Rams. There are no fans, so it's not that great of an advantage. But Rams, I think they could keep up with them. And, I mean, one or two turnovers, as we saw last week, could make a difference in this game. First time for Russell Wilson playing in the new stadium. So that also could be an advantage for the Rams because he'll have to figure it out. So I like to point there uh, by you, that you made there. That could be a, it could be a factor, but probably not. Well, it's Russell Wilson. Let's be real here. Yeah. Steelers, Bengals. To me, this one's really easy. I love the Bengals, but I'm not really. I don't love the Bengals. What am I saying? <laughs> I, Steelers should go 9-0. and And we look at their schedule, actually. Jags. I mean, they really could – they probably will go 10-0. and 0. Um, So, yeah, give me the Steelers. I feel like they'll bounce back after a tough week. I feel like James Conner will be back in there having a bigger role. So, give me the Steelers here. But uh, maybe Joe Burrow will throw for 300 yards like he kind of has done all year pretty quietly too. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to go with the Steelers. But, honestly, this game could be a sneaky potential upset. I'm not sure how confident I am in it. It's just because they are division rivals and especially the fact that uh, Big Ben, he did have his little – COVID question and then his knees are a little bit messed up and banged up now especially after that game well that he that excuse me blah, blah, blah. The, the injuries on his knees that he that uh, happened last week versus the Dallas Cowboys so I mean can you see a little bit of, of an off week from Big Ben that leads to the Bengals winning this game I'm not sure I think there is a slight chance that that could happen but it's unlikely and for that reason I'm going to give it to the Steelers James Conner is going to bounce back there's no way he averages 2.4 yards per carry once again now i agree with you there steelers should get a nice w niners saints uh the last four four o'clock game out of six that's nice i'm gonna go saints here uh niners too many injuries obviously uh they're just really not healthy right now uh they lost to the packers by a pretty good margin on that thursday night football game so now they're four and five that's kind of impressive yeah. to me but saints really looked good and in the superdome to me this is a game that the saints don't lose saints Win it again. I mean, coming off 38 to 3 win versus the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks. That's that's a down. That was a bad game for the Bucks, but the 49ers, they're they're bad right now with all their injuries. So it's easy Saints win. I'm with Kamara, Michael Thomas. You're gonna have big games. Mason Hill, maybe we'll see him again. The end. And you never know what will happen there. Ravens Pats. To me, I mean. Lamar Jackson has been terrible this season. In all he's, honesty, he's been so, really bad. It's that man curse, I think. I, I didn't even think about that. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe he'll be back to MVP Lamar. To only, Patty Mahomes seems to be the only one that's overcame the Madden curse. I mean, I guess his curse was that he got injured, but um, and won a Super Bowl. So <laughs> not much of a curse there. But yeah, yeah I, I don't know what's happening there. Pats almost lost to the Jets, though. So in no way do the Pats have, will win this game. There's no chance. Ravens D has also been their key, and the Pats offense has been their weakness. So to me, those will. Uh, I'll, we might see another defensive touchdown. Uh, sorry, someone just called me. Uh, not sure what that's about. Um, but we'll get to that later. Um, okay, good to go now. Right. Keep calling me. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> give me the Ravens. Uh, Ravens, 
bounce back week for Lamar. I've said this every week almost, but he needs to play better, and we'll see what happens with Cam Newton. Yeah, I want to quickly just say this real quick. I mean, this could be potentially a reason for Lamar Jackson and the struggles he's been having. But as he said, who knows how true this is, but he says defenses are calling out the plays before they even snap the ball. The defense. Yeah, that was weird. That was crazy. I mean, does that, I mean, if that is true, that's probably the factor for why Lamar hasn't been playing up to uh, last year's level or close to last year's level. Uh, so that could be a reason, but uh, there's it's it's really hard to prove that. But the Baltimore Ravens, they're just a better team overall than the Patriots, as you said. The Patriots almost lost to the Jets. That should have been a Jets win. So I'll give credit to the, the Patriots. Jets. We're so close. We're close to win. I'm glad they lost, though. It's, it's tank time for them. But uh, I, I was pretty mad when that happened. I'm like, I know you would. You oh. were like saying the Jets. Did you predict it officially, or did you switch? So I predicted on last week's on broadcast, but on our okay. episode, I switched it because of Joe Flacco being the starter. Gotcha. Yeah, but, if you haven't checked out Rome's podcast, also go check that out. Just, Banger Week. We'll Filmed a great out. episode there last week. I predicted actually all the MLB awards correctly, so yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, got them all right. So, uh, yeah, check that out. I saw he was taking a break this week, but he said he'll be back next week, so go check that out for sure. Yep. Graham's getting the win here. Ravens are getting the win for sure. Uh, so that was Sunday night. I can't click out of this. <laughs> there, you go. there we go. There we go. Vikings, why it pushes up with the mouse? <laughs> All right, there we go. Vikings, Bears. Um, oh, my, Matt Nagy's giving up the call, the play calling duties. Oh my god, I can't speak. Um, this is so hard, man. I don't like the Bears. So I'm gonna go Vikings. I I just don't believe in the Bears. Nick Foles has looked bad these past few weeks. Uh, the Vikings, you know, they've strung together some nice wings. Kirk Cousins. I feel like could have a nice day in the air. And they have Dalvin Cook. I mean, that's enough said. Dalvin Cook uh, really will probably be able to carry this team to uh, to a victory here. He'll, I think. I don't think he's stoppable right now. I mean, you look at the games he's putting up, it's, ri- it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, Vikings here. Yeah, Bears 5-4. and four. They started off 5-1, and one, and now they're going to be 5-5 five and five after this week. Vikings. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah Vikings are going to get a win here with Dalvin Cook back. They look special. Justin Jefferson, that rookie, he's a stud. And Dalvin Cook putting up two straight 200-plus yard games overall. This is a week, I mean, I guess the Bears defense, 200 yards may be a little excessive, but <laughs> at least 125 to 150 from him at least, at least this week. And at least. least. Mark it down in your calendars, guys. <laughs> Mac is guaranteeing um, at least 125 yards from Dalvin Cook. Yep, at least. Make your bets if you're old enough. Make your bets. He's getting at least 125 this week. Vikings, their defense still still showing showing problems, but uh, the receivers for the Bears, they're getting open. Nick Foles and the quarterbacks haven't been able to hit them even when they're wide open, and that's the problem. So there's no way the Bears offense, even against the bad Minnesota Vikings defense, could have success if you're not even able to hit the receivers when they're open. That's the problem. So Vikings are going to get an easy win here. Easy. Yeah, so that will do it for our Week 10 predictions. I believe we have Week 10. Um, yeah, I mean, we got pretty similar uh, results from both of us there. I'm not too sure where we disagreed. I think the, the Cardinals game maybe might have been one of the only places. Um, I don't think yeah, really I don't know. It seems like we don't really disagree that much. I feel like we kind of have similar opinions, but yeah. Um, yeah, anything else you want to talk about or you want to wrap this one up? I guess I could wrap this up if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I got everything out that I wanted to say, and I'm having trouble saying everything. So <laughs> better wrap this one up quick. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching this week's episode of Outside the Arena. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. My Instagram is mac.rommel. Griffin's Instagram is Griffin Senek. And our podcast Instagram is Outside the Arena Podcast. Make sure to go follow us there. Hit us up, DM us, leave a comment, whatever you guys want to see. We'll make sure to incorporated in some way or another if you want to come in you have guests please let us know we would greatly appreciate that and we'll see you next week on outside the arena